Hello and welcome. Now you are now looking at Amazon Prime Video Direct. And Prime Video Direct is a platform designed to help content creators reach their targeted audience on the Amazon website. And while Amazon is known primarily for consumer goods as well as consumer video, you can also find targeted business content. For example, if you were to go to Amazon.com and you were to type in the words WordPress membership, as you can see, and then you click the search button, what you'd find at the very top in the first result is you'd see an Amazon Prime video. So to introduce this concept, let's click inside of this result. What you'll notice is that an individual with a Prime account can watch the video for free, or an individual without the Prime account can watch the video with advertising. That person also has the opportunity to purchase the video. And the creator can add multiple videos to this title. And for their activity, those who create videos and upload them to Amazon are paid royalties for those who watch their videos. Now in this course, we will review the policy guidelines when it comes to content because they'll be very important to your being able to upload titles that will be of interest while yet maintaining consistent production. So in the next video, we'll start the process by looking at the royalty information so that you can determine how you want to create videos and how consistently you want to maintain them on the Amazon Video Direct platform. We'll then walk through the account setup process. We'll then go over the minimum equipment necessary in order to start creating videos. We'll then very quickly determine whether or not there are titles in your chosen market or niche for information. We will then work through the content creation process. So with that, we're now ready to get started working with Amazon Video Direct. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the inside of Amazon Prime Video Direct. And you'll notice that if you go to the support link, that you'll pull open a side menu here you're going to then click get started and then you'll want to click on royalty information and you're going to see a schedule of information here and so now we'll discuss royalties and compensation now you are going to be paid monthly based on a number of different activities altogether first you're going to be paid video purchases and rentals it happens you'll be paid 50 percent of the net revenues of purchases and rentals. Now customers can buy episodes or seasons and then any episodes that they purchase, they decide to purchase a season later, they'll count toward their actual purchase. They'll get the entire season at a discount. And if you go to Prime Video and you type in a title that you're likely to find, for example, we typed in WordPress, you'll see the different classifications here. You'll see that someone can watch an episode, they can buy the entire season, or they can watch an episode free with ads, or they can buy outright. And the main way you're going to generate revenue is going to be the number of people who are watching your videos. And some of those views are going to be included with people who have subscriptions to Amazon Prime. And there are going to be different tiers of activity based on the aggregate hours streamed. So for example, every year Amazon will determine how many hours people are streaming your videos and that'll put you on a certain tier to be paid more or less so for example the more hours that people are streaming your videos the higher your rate of pay and you'll see that in the schedule now once your tier is determined then you'll be paid based on the number of hours actually streamed so you'll have a tier and then you'll have streaming that will take place and again the higher your tier the higher the rate of pay you're also going to be paid 55% of the net advertising revenue of individuals who've chosen to watch videos free but to have ads associated with them. You'll also be paid 55% of net monthly revenues of individuals who are watching your videos through Amazon channels. When that happens, payments are going to be issued 90 days after the end of the month after the activity occurs. And Payments are going to be made by the bank account that you've already set up unless you choose to have payments wire transferred. And when you have wire transfers, you are going to have a certain dollar threshold to meet before you can be paid. And you can look at the details of the threshold as well as the tiers and prime streaming in the royalty information section of your support area. 
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. So when you're inside of your account, what you're going to do first is you're going to come up to the drop down arrow. You're going to set up your new account. You're going to be brought to the digital license agreement. You want to read through this license agreement. Once you've done that, you're going to come all the way to the bottom and then click agree. You're then going to want to set up your administrator profile. And you can set up a second administrator who can serve as a backup. Once you've done that, you will click save and continue. Amazon will then have you set up a bank account in order to set up your account. Once you enter in the information, you can then click save. You can also add in a second bank account if that is what you prefer. You'll then be asked to create tax information, so you'll need to click this link. And once your tax information is validated, you'll then click exit interview. Once you've done that, your account will then be set up and you are ready then to begin uploading videos. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you started the process with Prime Video Direct, you've probably already set up a brand. You've probably already set up a bank account. Now, there's quite possible that you may want to work with an individual that you want to have assist you with your account. However, you don't want them to have all information on all of your videos. And if that's the case, you can go to the top menu here and a little bit of this is blurred out, but you're going to go to this drop down menu and then you're going to click create another account. What you're going to notice right away is that this is the same license agreement that you agreed to when you set up your account initially. And what you can do then is then agree to this once more for the new account. Now the individual that's going to be set up with this account is going to be the administrator or you are going to administrate the account also. And you'll notice here that you're going to have to go through this same process, setting up the business account, setting up your payments, and then submitting your tax information. And what this does is it allows you to set up different information for videos that you're going to be creating under a different address and different company profile. And this separate brand will have its own dashboard, its own videos, own landing pages, and everything separate. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. If you go inside of your account settings, you'll notice that you have yourself as an administrator and you may have someone that you invited. You can invite other individuals in order to help you manage the account. In order to do that, you're going to click invite users. You're going to write in the individual's name and email address. And once you've entered that individual's name, you're going to select a role for them. Now you can make for them a custom role. You can make for them an administrator role, or you can make it so that they can look at your account only. Now, for the sake of this video, we're going to choose a custom role, and then we're going to determine what we want them to see. And in this case, we're giving the individual access to the ability to add, modify, and publish video titles so that they can help us to manage the account. We're not going to give them access to sales reports. We're not going to give them access to the ability to add new users. We're not going to give them access to any banking information. Once we have all that where we want to determine how the individual is going to interact with the account, we're then going to click send invite. Then that individual will reflect an invite pending. Now the individual is going to get an email asking them to click a link to accept your invitation. They'll then click this link. Now if the individual does not have an Amazon account, they'll need to create one or they can use their existing Amazon account. Then the person that you added will then have access to your Prime Video Direct account. And if you refresh your page or hit F5, you should see that the individual is then part of your account. You can always go in and edit their custom settings. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. In this video, we want to discuss some of the equipment you're going to need in order to create videos. Now, obviously, you can create them as elaborately as you want. However, if you're creating them for your business, 
you do have a minimum level of equipment you're going to need and that's what we're going to cover in this session. Now assuming that you already have a computer and or a smartphone you are going to need a way of being able to capture audio and typically you're going to need some kind of noise canceling headset or microphone and you can get one like the one that's pictured the Plantronics Audio 355 it goes into most PCs and Macs. Now even though the Plantronics is noise canceling you are going to need something like a pop filter or something to capture the noise and wind and you can do that very easily with some kind of windscreen which you can get inside of a site like Amazon. Now, it's quite possible that your laptop will not have tracks for an audio headset. It may have a USB port and if that's the case you can buy an adapter for your stereo jacks so that they can go into your laptop. Now, one of the things that will make recording your videos much easier is to have a second and or third monitor and you can get travel versions of the monitor in 1080 or high definition by looking for a travel monitor with 1080p. Now you'll need to be careful when you're looking at these monitors because most of them don't come in high definition and you'll need that in order to record your video properly. So make sure that you're looking for one with high definition and that it actually travels with you wherever you go. If you're recording yourself or you're recording some kind of activity you'll be able to use an external webcam that does not depend on the resources of your personal computer and you can get one in the Logitech C930E. Of course you can get something that's a lot more elaborate than this but this is a very easy and affordable choice in terms of a webcam. Now the webcam that we just mentioned it actually adjusts to the lighting however in most cases you are going to need to be able to throw some kind of light on your subject even if it is you and you can do that very easily and affordably by getting a number of what's called a clamp lamp to place around your recording area. If you need to soften the light that comes from the clamp lamp you can do that with a pair of white hosiery. In order to neutralize your background you can do this very easily and affordably with what's called a shoji screen. And once again this is according to preference but this is a very neutral background that anyone can use in order to take away the unprofessional look from their background. And if pricing is an issue to find these items you can use a meta search for both eBay and Craigslist depending on where you live in the world you can type in your search phrase to searchtempest.com or all of Craigslist. Now you are going to need some kind of recording and capturing software to run on your Mac or PC. You can find one of the most commonly used applications in TechSmith Camtasia. Now because TechSmith Camtasia runs over $200 you'll be able to pick up a screen capture and editing program for much less than that if you choose to use Screencast-O-Matic which again does all of the functions in terms of capturing video, capturing your screen and giving you the opportunity to edit your content. If you're going to give your presentation while you're creating your videos you're likely to use a free application on Google such as Google Docs or Google Slides or of course you can use Microsoft Office and PowerPoint. Now if you're already a user of a webinar application you can use this feature to record your videos even though you do not have features to edit the videos in sites like GoToWebinar. There's similar paid applications such as Zoom and free applications that you can record your screen such as Google Hangouts. Now in combining all of these elements you'll be able to put together a reasonably priced system that will help you to get started until you reach the point where you want to invest more in your video creation system. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to go through a simple process of determining some niche topics that you can think about for creating your videos. Now, if you go to google.com and you were to go to the search bar and you were to type in your area of expertise and then wait for Google Suggest to give you options, you'll see some of the most recent searches. 
for example in this particular case if we were to go to Google and we typed in WordPress membership we would see at least 10 different options for us to start looking and do more searching if we were going to stay on Google and of course we would do the very same thing in YouTube now in some cases these searches will yield the same results in other cases there will be some overlap in other cases they will be totally different what you want to do when you have determined some of the search terms that you want to start looking for you want to go inside of Amazon Prime Video Direct but we're going to do this a little differently we're going to put in our search term when we put in that search what you're going to notice is you're going to notice some Kindle book activity you'll see some physical copies of information and then at the very bottom you'll also see that there is a listing here for Amazon Video Direct you'll see some other activity for Amazon Video Direct and so what you will begin to see is whether or not there is going to be room for you to place your video content on a specific search of course we can find other Google starter search terms by using sites like Google Trends so basically what we're doing is we're leveraging Google to find out what has been recently searched and then we're working inside of the Amazon site to determine whether or not we can place content in those particular searches and very often you'll see that depending on what your subject area is your content may be all that will be in a specific classification now in some cases if you do a search in association with Amazon Kindle you will find some video associated with your subject although currently this is not typically the case there are going to be times where you'll see video as a recommended item for example Amazon will show an individual feature recommendations based on their browsing history okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now you're looking at the inside of a video inside of Amazon video direct and you'll notice that this is a video all by itself and that there are no seasons attached to it this is one of the ways that you can create content for Amazon video direct you can create a video as what's called a standalone video and so we'll briefly discuss standalone titles but there are three primary ways to publish in Amazon video direct you can publish as a standalone title as we've just seen you can publish as a series and you can publish as a channel now the standalone title is as it says it's one volume or one video and typically when you think of it in terms of a featured movie that you might see at a theater that is a standalone it doesn't require you to see anything before or after it to get the maximum benefit or enjoyment from the video so you can create a video with the intention that it would be viewed as one unit and so that people would not have to see anything else to get the maximum benefit and you were communicating one idea or one event this would be how you would use the standalone title now here's something that will be mentioned later and is important to note you want to keep your audience in mind when you create video in particular a standalone title you will have viewers rating your video and that will really determine how others see you so you don't want to do it without thought you don't want to leave a standalone title available on your account if it's not the best way to communicate the information that you're trying to get across okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now one of the other ways to arrange your content will be in terms of episodes and seasons as you can see here in this particular title you can see that there are 10 seasons and you can get access to them inside of Amazon there are also episodes inside of each season so if we change this season to a particular one all the episodes then change this gives you the opportunity to do a different kind of information video while arranging it all under one title now you can also arrange your content by channel and as you can see here there are a number of companies that already have channels where they have all of their content now there are some specific parameters and we will go over that right now so in this session we'll discuss episodes and channels so in addition to creating a standalone title you can also create what's called an episodic title and in this case a title can have multiple episodes which is also a series 
or multiple seasons, as you can see. And since you're more likely to be communicating business information, you can think in terms of having one title with different subjects or episodes and different volumes or updates, even though they will be called series and episodes. So what you have here when you're using the episodes and seasons is you have more latitude over the process when you use episodes. And when you're creating your content, you're branding your graphics, you want to think of this in terms of how you're going to actually arrange your series when you place it in Amazon Video Direct. Now with respect to channels, they are available when you have a minimum of 200 standalone titles or 50 seasons available for a minimum of 18 months. That's quite a bit of content, but it may be something that you want to build toward. Now, once these titles are included as a channel though, they can no longer be included as prime video. So one thing you can think about as you begin creating content is creating titles with eventually having a channel for your content. But currently, as the program is fairly new, there aren't that many information and business-based channels available on Amazon Video Direct, so there's plenty of room for you to create your content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to walk through a few tips that you can use when you are recording instructional style videos. In instructional style videos, you will be either narrating or you'll be discussing points as you scroll through your PowerPoint presentation or your presentation software. Now, there are a couple of settings that you are going to want to be aware of. The first is you're going to want to be aware of the design tab. And if you're not using PowerPoint, you'll want to find the equivalent in the software you're using. In PowerPoint, you will notice that there is a diagonal button here that says slide size. You will want to make sure that you are using the widescreen size, mainly because this is how most videos are going to fit well on the screen. Now the other thing that you're noticing that is invisible to the recording of this video is that the monitor being used to record this video is 1920 by 1080 which matches the widescreen size. Now if you have a monitor that is of a different size and you're not recording on that monitor you are going to want to use one that's going to be either a custom size that will be proportional to the monitor you're using or one that is very close in size whether it is 4x3 or 16x9. Now another thing that you're going to want to be aware of is the transitions screen. The transitions are going to be seen as you move from slide to slide, not within the slide, but between the slides. Now you will typically want to have no transitions, mainly because this can be distracting for the individual and you want them to be focused on the information while you narrate. The next tab over is animations. Now when you have animations, what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to scroll through your points one at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our cursor inside of this slide. And what you'll notice is that when we set our animations, we need to place our cursor next to one of the lines and then we'll need to decide what our animation is. For example, we can use any of these animations. In general, you want to try to keep your animation as unobtrusive as possible. So you don't want to have something that's going to be a distraction. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the float in animation. And you'll notice that these points float in one at a time. Now it's quite possible that you may not want your points to float in all together in one section. So for example, you'll notice that with line one, you'll notice that there is a number one. So this means that this will come one at a time. You'll notice that the number two though coincides with both this point and three sub points with it. And so how does that appear on screen? In order to illustrate that, we can just go to the slideshow, go to from the current slide, and we can see that all of these points go with the sub points. And that may not be the way you want to do it. You may want to have it so that each sub point comes one after the other. So if that's the case, we're going to hit the escape button 
And what we're going to do is to go back to the animations. And we're going to place our cursor at the first subpoint. And when we do that, what you're going to notice is that we're going to go over to this Start tab. And we're going to use the tab that says On Click. When we click that, here's what you're going to notice. You're going to notice that the numbers have changed from 2, 2, 2, 2 to 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. And that means then that 3 will come after 2 and they'll all come one at a time. So, for example, if we go back to the slideshow, and we click the current slide, and we tab through, what we're going to notice now is that our points come one at a time. So to go back to the screen now, we're going to hit the escape button to go back to the slide. That's quite possible also that we may want to use notes with our presentation. And if that's the case, we can go to the view screen. We can then go to this view that says notes page. What you're going to notice is that there are two parts of our presentation now. And we can write in our notes for this slide. So if we want to narrate the slide or we want to be aware of something while we are talking through the points, we can write notes in this area. This can be especially handy if we are using this as a handout or if we are using this in a presentation. And in the next video, we'll show you how notes written on this slide can help you when you're doing an actual presentation. So to that end, we're going to write in some text here. And so in the next video, we'll explore this, where we've gone to this slide for Amazon Video Direct Royalties, and we've written in the text, paid monthly, 90 days, and 55%. And you'll see now how this will help us when we are creating instructional style videos and we're recording. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are picking it up in this video from the point at which we wrote in notes for our presentation while we're recording a video. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our normal screen by clicking this normal link. That takes us back to the normal PowerPoint presentation screen. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the slideshow tab. When we go to the slideshow tab, we want to make sure that this box is ticked, and that is Use Presenter View. That Use Presenter View is going to help us, especially if we have two monitors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the slide that we're going to start narrating. And in this case, we're going to assume that this slide, the one Amazon Video Direct Royalties, is the one that we're going to be narrating in our actual video. So before we start the presentation, what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says From Current Slide. And that actually starts the PowerPoint presentation from this slide at the very beginning. So we click this button. What you're going to notice is that we're ready to start scrolling through our points. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch between the view where we're recording, or we would be recording, and we're going to switch it to the presenter view that we just talked about. Now this presenter view is going to help us, especially if we have two screens. And you'll notice right here in the notes section that there are our notes. It's say paid monthly, 90 days, and 55%. So if we wanted to make sure that we mention these things during our presentation, they would be visible to us on our second screen. Now the other thing that we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to see what's going to come on our screen before it actually happens. So for example, the screen on the left side is the one that's going to be shown to the people that are going to be seeing the video. The screen on the right side will be the one that has the next click point of the mouse. So every time that we advance, what's going to happen is the slide that's showing on the video, it's going to advance, and then so will the presentation slide. And this will be on the right side of our second monitor. What we can do in this case is we can switch back and forth between the display settings. And then we're then showing our monitor view in order to do the video. We're going to go back to the presenter view for one more tip. We come back to the presenter view.
you're going to notice that there is a button that has three dots in it and this will give us our other slideshow options so for example you'll see here that we can make our screen all black or we can make it all white or if we just want to end the show very easily we can click this link we can also click the very same link at the top if we had a pen and we wanted to write on the screen for the audience we could do that by clicking the pen tool and you can see that here just by us being able to write in on top of the slide now this is very difficult to do in an orderly fashion so you'll want to make sure that either you have a pen pad or you have a tablet where you have control over the pen that you know how to make it look legible and in order to switch back what we're going to do I'm going to switch back to the presenter view so you can see how we're going to do this. All you'll need to do then is to go back to your pen and then you're going to make sure that you erase the ink on all the slide and then your slide goes back to normal. So now we're going to switch back to our PowerPoint view. And those are some ways that you can have additional control over your PowerPoint presentation while you're recording the video so you can add to the variety that your viewers are seeing. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, when you're recording demonstration-style videos and you are displaying what is on your screen for the people who are watching your video, there are a couple of things that you will want. One of the first things you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that you're using the highest resolution possible on the screen where you're going to be displaying your demo and a narration. So for example, you'll notice here that for this monitor where we're recording the video, the resolution is 1920 by 1080, which is considered to be HD. If possible, that's the resolution that you'll want to use, or at minimum, you'll want to use 1280 by 720. Now, when you are demonstrating content on the web, one distraction that routinely happens to video creators is they show the address bar and sometimes they even show typing. If you can avoid doing that, one of the ways that you can accomplish this is to set up any tabs that you're going to open before you start recording. So for example, we're going to open up five tabs. So you'll notice that we have open Amazon, Google, Facebook, and YouTube. One of the ways that we can record this is we can record this by going to our browser and hitting the F11 key, which will take us to full screen mode. What that does is that eliminates the address bar and you can demonstrate your screen without your viewer seeing it. And one of the other things that you can do while you're using this mode is you can switch back and forth between tabs by hitting the control and the tab key and you can move between screens. Control then tab, you move to the Google screen, control then tab, you can move to the next which is the Facebook screen, control then tab, and we move back to the screen where we started. We can also tab through pages while we're in full screen mode. So for example, if we click a link and we go to some other pages, what we'll need to do now if we want to go backwards is we'll hit the alt key and then we'll hit the left arrow and that'll take us back one screen we'll hit the alt key and the left arrow that'll take us back another screen we'll click the alt key and the left arrow and that'll take us back to the very beginning if we click the alt key and then the right arrow key that'll take us forward We'll do it again and that'll take us forward one more screen. If we want the address bar to appear again, we can click F11 and then our screen reflects the fact that the address bar is now visible. Now in the next video, we'll go through a few more tips that you'll need to record your demonstration style video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I'll see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at the recording toolbar. And to do that, we're going to open up our recording bar. And you'll notice that this is an active bar. So in other words, this is reflecting what is being recorded right now for this video. 
Now, where you're going to want to look going to be in this tools menu, and you're going to want to do this before you start the video. You're going to click tools, and you'll notice that the options key is grayed out. Now you're now looking at a screenshot of the options tab. And what you're going to notice is that there is a section here for inputs, and there's a section here for hotkeys. You want to make sure that you know what's in the hotkey section. Now, what you can do with these hotkeys is you can make it so that all you'll need to do is to hit a particular button when you want to affect some kind of major change while you're recording. And in particular, while you're doing the recording, you may often need to pause. Maybe you need to collect your thoughts. Maybe you need to change direction in the presentation. And you want to be able to do this in an easy to remember way. So you can set up your pause key and the recording will stop while you collect your thoughts. And when you hit F9 again, the recording will start again. So you don't have to start all over again when you think you might have made a mistake. You can stop the recording by setting up your stop hotkey. Now these two keys in particular are important while you're doing demonstration style videos because by using them you can record your videos in one take and edit them in one take instead of starting them and then never quite finishing the video. Now lastly you'll notice that the mouse is moving on this page. When you edit your video you can edit so that this cursor will be highlighted. It can be highlighted in a magnifying glass or it can be highlighted in yellow as it moves around the screen. And so while you are demonstrating, you'll want to be aware of what this cursor is doing in case you re-edit the video by showing the cursor either being highlighted or magnified. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now looking at a video that's being edited in the side of Camtasia 8. And regardless of your video editing software, you're going to have some decisions to make about editing. Now, one thing that we're going to do in the editing process is we're going to make sure that we edit in the highest resolution possible. And we're going to show you how to do this in Camtasia 8. You'll need to make sure that you can do the very same process inside of the video software that you own. Now the default settings in Camtasia when you start the final production process say 854 by 480. However, we want to make sure that this is going to be closest to our recording dimensions which we should have done, if possible, at 1920 by 1080. So we want to make sure that we use those dimensions. Now, if possible, during the rendering process, we want to set our audio at the highest level that we can. And typically, this is going to be right at 192 kbps. Now, in some cases, your video editing software will give you the option of being able to put metadata inside of the video file. Now, we will not have to do this because we'll be doing this inside of Amazon Video Direct. So where you have the project information, the author information, and even the iTunes information, you'll want to make sure that you have this correct for the upload process. You don't have to have it for the final production. And finally, for your video section, typically the default settings for a software application like Camtasia or Screencast-O-Matic will be correct from the start. However, you can make sure that your frame rate is going to be as high as you can if you can produce it at 30 frames per second or 15. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now there are several instances inside of the screens where you're going to be uploading your videos where you are going to be required to upload some graphics for your videos. And you may want to have some of these graphics created. So this video is going to detail the graphics you're going to need for your account. So to create the necessary artwork, when you are creating episodes or episodic videos, you are going to need seasonal art. And those are going to require some specific aspects to the graphics. You're going to need a widescreen aspect. You're going to need a 1920 by 1080 photo to appear correctly, and it can be JPEG or PNG. 
but there is key art that you'll need to create that is also a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. That'll need to be 1600 by 1200, JPEG or PNG. And there is an optional file that you'll want to upload that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's 1920 by 1080, JPEG or PNG. And this is going to be a background image. It's only going to appear on the devices in order to convey mood. And you'll see the request for the three of these when you are uploading your image. You'll see one here in the key art area as well as the background image. Now you can also include artwork for individual episodes. That episode will require a key art aspect ratio of 4-3. It'll need to be 1600 by 1200 and it'll be JPEG or PNG. And you'll see that request when you are uploading your individual episode video. Now for the standalone videos, the key art will have 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It'll need to be 1920 by 1080, JPEG or PNG. Now you'll also have another key art piece. This time though, it'll be 3 by 4 aspect ratio, so not 4 by 3. That means then that the art will be 1200 by 1600. And again, you want to pay attention to that. It's a little different than the other size. That'll also need to be JPEG or PNG. Now, there's also space for a background image, and it'll need to be 1920 by 1080 JPEG or PNG. And once again, it's going to be optional because it's only designed to convey mood on certain devices. And you'll see that here in the standalone upload section where the second key art piece is 3 by 4. Now, there's also a landing page that you are being given and you're going to be able to use along with your videos that will require you to have a logo. That logo will need to be 950 by 250. You'll need to use a PNG with a transparent background. You're also going to have a background image that will need to be 3000 by 600 as well as another background image which is 1920 by 720. So one question is, well, how will you create the designs? Now, what you can do is you can hire out the base design. You can hire those designs out on Fiverr or the Warrior form in the Warriors for Hire section. Now, when you do hire out these graphics, you want to make sure that you ask for the PSD file. In some cases, the designer may ask you for additional funds to do that, and it's actually going to be worth it for you to get those PSD files because you will then be able to adapt them and brand them for future designs when you do more videos. And you'll be able to keep a consistent design across all of your videos. Now to do this, you are going to need some graphic editing skill, not a lot, but a minimal amount. And you'll need some kind of graphics editing application, something like Photoshop or an equivalent one. Now another way for you to create the designs is to manipulate existing designs. You can use private label rights content where you have PSD files or graphics already and you can change those designs to reflect your videos. If you have some kind of graphic design software application, this will be fairly easy. What you'll need to do is you'll need to use the flat PSD graphic and by using that graphic, you'll be able to manipulate the design for the different sizes. Of course, you can also use a design program like Canva where you can do the design yourself from scratch. And of course, you can always use a hybrid version of all of these methods. You're now looking at a flat graphic design from a private label rights product inside of Photoshop. And what we can do is we can go and open a new file it's going to be one of the dimensions that we need. So for example, we would go to this file area. We're going to click new. We're then going to open up this new size and we want this new size to be 1920 by 1080. We're going to click create. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our flat design. We're first going to select all. We're going to then copy merged. Then we're going to go back to our new design and then we're going to place that design and paste it in. Now this is a 1920 by 1080 image and so we want this design to be able to fit 
what we're trying to do. Now, when you have a PSD file, you can manipulate the size of this file without losing the proportions of the graphics and the text on the design. So for example, what we can do is we can zoom out of this design and then we can grab the handles and we can manipulate the design in order to fit our canvas. We can make sure that we keep the aspect ratio in Photoshop. And once we have our design the way we want, all we're going to do is we're then going to click this button. We're going to apply the design. And you'll notice then that it will actually clear up. We can then save this design as a new file. And we can save it as a new file in the format that we want. So if we want to use JPEG or we want to use PNG, we can do that. So again, if you know how to manipulate a design here and you can actually go into the title and you know how to change the title and some of the letters and maybe even one of the images, this is an easy way to take a professional design and turn it into one for your videos. And it also demonstrates the fact that when you get a PSD file from the designer, all you'll need to do then is know how to manipulate that design so that you can begin placing it on all of your videos. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, whether you're creating an episodic video or a standalone title, you will be required by Amazon in order to place captions along with your video. So in order to do that, you are going to need a transcription of your video. Amazon does give recommendations for video captioning service or video transcription. And Amazon has its own transcription service called Amazon Transcribe, where you have a free tier, 60 minutes per month for 12 months, and you will actually get an hour's worth of free transcription. And then afterward, the transcription is a small amount per second. Now, in order to use Amazon Transcribe, you are going to need to have an Amazon S3 account. And so if you have a file that's stored in Amazon S3, you'll be able to use that file along with Amazon Transcribe. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we are going to walk through the process of uploading a standalone video. So to do that, you're going to click your videos. What you're going to do then is you're going to add your standalone title and you're going to write in a title, pick a category, and then select the language that you want your metadata to be in. Once you do that, you'll then click continue. Now you'll then want to write in your synopsis. Now, you want to make sure that this synopsis does not have self-promotional details. You aren't going to be able to put URLs in here. So you do want this to reflect what your title is going to be about. Once you've done that, you're then going to click the category or genre. And when you click inside of the area, you're going to notice that there's going to be a drop down menu. And you're going to be able to find the exact category that Amazon Video Direct wants you to place. You'll then choose your language and then you'll choose a release date. You'll then want to choose a rating and in some cases you are not going to have a rating for your title. If that's the case you're going to click suggested rating is that the title is not officially rated. And you can then make your title available for all audiences. You're then going to upload the art that you created. Now, if you already have an Amazon S3 account and you have that artwork loaded on Amazon S3, you can copy the file from your Amazon S3 account over into Amazon Video Direct. However, if your file is on your hard drive, you can upload that file by clicking the Browse button. Once you have everything on the page that you want, you'll then click Save. But once you've saved this page, you'll then want to move to the cast and crew page. You'll want to write in the name of the creator as well as your crew member. Now, Amazon Video Direct is going to require that you have at least one crew member. And what you're going to do is you're going to write in 
the role of that individual. And then if you don't want to have a cast member, you can leave this out. Once you have all this information ready, you can then click Save. You'll then move to your Video Assets section. And what you'll be doing then is you'll be uploading your file, your captions, and if you have a trailer, you can upload that trailer to this area. And once you have the necessary content, you can then click Save. And once you've uploaded your content, one thing you'll want to note is that in order to get your transcribed file to go along with the file that you're uploading with your video, it will need to be an SRT file or one of the formats outlined by Amazon. We'll now go to the Availability tab and we'll choose where we want the content to be made available. We'll click all of the applicable places where we want it to be available. We'll determine how we want it to be streamed. And once we've done all that, we'll then click Save. And once you have uploaded and you have completed all of your titles, you will then be ready to publish your video for viewing on Amazon Video Direct. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to produce an episodic video title. So to get started, we're going to click Your Videos. We're then going to click Episodic. We're then going to click Add Series. And we're going to give our series a title and synopsis. We will then pick a category. And then we'll pick our metadata language and click Continue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our listing for the actual season. And we'll need to write in another synopsis for the season. We'll then click our genres. We'll then choose our language. And where it's applicable, we'll write in the original release year. Now again, you don't have to add a rating, but if you want to do it that way, you want to click Suggested Rating title not officially rated, and then make it available for all ages. You'll then upload your graphics according to the right dimensions. And once you have your seasonal information in, you'll then click Save. We'll then move on to the creator. Remember, you are going to need to make sure that you have at least one crew member mentioned. If you really don't have a cast member, you don't have to place one there, you can then click Save. You'll then be able to move on to individual episodes, and you'll start by adding a new episode. And of course, each individual episode will have its own title, release date, synopsis, the video file, the captions file, and an optional art file. Now once you upload episodes, what you'll need to do is you'll need to select the language, the frame rate, and the language for the captions. Again, you'll want to make sure your transcription is going to be an SRT file, and then you'll click Save. Amazon Video Direct will start the upload process for your video. You then want to go to your Availability tab. You want to make it available in the locations where you want it to be seen. And again, you can determine either base pricing or value pricing. Again, that's based on your preference. And once you've done that, you'll then click Save. And once you've completed all four sections, you are then ready to publish your video so that others can begin to watch on Amazon Video Direct. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Amazon will give you the ability to customize your landing page for your videos. And so you can do that by clicking Landing Page. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to write in the name that you want to display to your customers. And you'll want to write in your custom URL. So you'll notice that the custom URL will start with Amazon.com forward slash V. 
what you'll do is you'll write in what you want to appear after the URL. So once you've uploaded all your logos according to the dimensions that Amazon gives you, you're going to take note of how it's going to appear on the actual branding. Now we've uploaded some dummy images, but you'll notice that the logo appears right in the middle of this preview and then it appears right in the middle of this web preview and then your background images appear in these areas. And so you'll want to take note of this and adjust your logos accordingly. Now one of the things that you'll note is that the partner name went away when there was no preview. So now once you have your landing page looking the way you'd like it to look with the information that you have there, you're then going to click Feature Enabled and then you'll click Save. Now in this case you'll note that Amazon is giving you an error message that says that your landing page is unavailable mainly because you need to make sure that you've got two published titles before you can launch your landing page. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In conclusion, you need to remember that Amazon does not want your video to be a promotional video. That means that you don't want the video to be something that will be sending people to landing pages inside of the actual video itself. In addition to that, in the descriptions and in the titles, those are not typically supposed to be promotional either. So there are other promotional methods, but you don't want to have this as part of the video or the description. Amazon does give you a landing page for your video. So this is one of the promotional elements that Amazon does give you. And remember that you do get an amazon.com forward slash V and any name that you designate. So even if right now you're not necessarily ready to create videos, one of the things you want to do is you want to go in and set up your account so that you can claim your name quickly. Now currently, Amazon does not connect Kindle with Video Direct. However, you will see similar subject matter appearing together on the page. So one of the things that you can test is if you have something in Kindle, you want to keep it very similar to something that you have in Amazon Video Direct to trigger suggestions for the actual customer. Now, one important thing to note is that Amazon does allow licensed content. That means that you do not have to originate the content. And it means that you can also use private label rights content. Now, that is said with caution. You can get a bad reputation in your reviews if your content is not considered to be robust enough for the customers. And you'll see the answer to this question in a recent inquiry to Amazon Video Direct. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.